Dear Dr. Smith, could you briefly introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. I'm Ryan Smith. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Virginia in urology. I specialize in male infertility. Okay. Uh, I trained with Dr. Larry Lipschultz at Baylor prior to being at the University of Virginia. Um, I know you have a um, presentation about chronic archaeology. So, um, could you briefly review the most recent uh, surgical developments in the management of chronic archaea? Sure. So, we have a course on surgical management of chronic ordalgia, which is a difficult disease to treat. The most important thing is identifying reversible causes of it. So in terms of surgical developments, one thing we know is that men who have post-vasectomy pain syndrome, one of the surgical options is vasectomy reversal, uh, which is a good option, and there's been high rates of success in terms of pain relief or even resolution of pain with vasectomy re reversal, uh, microsurgical approach. The other is if patients have a varicocele, uh, that there is good evidence that repairing varicocele for pain results in resolution of pain. And additionally, uh, microsurgical denervation of the spermatic cord is one of the better options in terms of pain relief for patients who qualify. And we assess their qualification by how they respond to a spermatic cord block in the clinic. Um, so um, do you think the preoperative counseling, imaging, and evaluation is very important for the patients with chronic occult? Algae. Uh, absolutely. So preoperative counseling is paramount for these patients, that they have reasonable expectations for what to expect after surgery because uh, we know that the majority of them won't have complete resolution of their pain. We want to make sure that their pain's been of sufficient duration to justify surgery. And we have some sort of reassurance that they have potential to get better after a surgical intervention. So counseling is very important. Uh, in terms of the preoperative evaluation, you want to rule out any reversible causes of chronic pain and treat those appropriately. Some patients may just need pain management or medical management as opposed to surgery. Uh, so what's the common evaluation of it? So in general, it's doing a thorough history and physical exam initially. Uh, most patients will get a urinalysis, maybe a culture in some patients. Scrotal ultrasound is commonly utilized, but uh, only rarely shows significant pathology requiring intervention. Those are probably the biggest, with history and physical being the most important. Um, so, um, do you have any suggestions to our young urologists uh, for this kind of thing? So, the main thing, again, is just really fine-tuning your history, physical, and if you feel like, uh, based on your evaluation, the patient's a good candidate for surgery, that the counseling is going to be paramount before. Uh, we also recommend, in general, doing a microsurgical approach for these uh, procedures, which has better outcomes. But counseling is paramount again for these patients. Why do you choose to get into the field of urology? So, uh, in terms of urology, I really enjoyed the patient population, the diseases we treat, and specifically male infertility. Uh, it's really you get to benefit a couple and helping to bring a child into the world. There's no greater gift than that. So that really is what got me into doing it. If you're not to be a urologist. Um, what else would you like to choose as your career? If I wasn't a urologist, I'd probably be um, a marine biologist. That's kind of what I always wanted to be when I was growing up. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Which is very different, obviously, than what I do now. But uh, I do really enjoy biology and teaching and uh, research. And I get to do all those things in my job now, too, which is what makes it great. Okay, thank you. No problem.